Hi guys, my name is Matt Ackerson. I'm the founder and CEO of autogrow.co. And in this video, we're talking about the ultimate guide to YouTube marketing metrics. We're going over five KPIs today that you should be tracking if you want to succeed on YouTube. And otherwise just know if your YouTube content is working to get you results and not just, you know, not just views, but actual quality results. So how do we, how do we measure all this? All right. And this is, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart because we're actually thinking of starting our own podcast live uh, very soon. So maybe I'll drop some ideas that we're thinking of for that. And you can let me know in the comments anything about the five KPIs or anything related to that. Uh, to start though, you know, in terms of using YouTube, there are, why, why, why would you actually want to consider investing in YouTube? Let's say that you're brand new to this. Well, of course, there's a ton of people, the, kind of the most basic stat that I could give you. There are over 2 billion active users today on YouTube. And that means there's great potential to reach a very wide audience of people. And you, you know, you, if you're wondering, is my target market on YouTube? Yes. Out of 2 billion people, you can pretty much guarantee that they are on YouTube. Now, in terms of like actually creating the content, to reach them, well, that's where you're gonna to have to get a little bit creative. Uh, but again, this is about, this video is more focused on uh, measuring your performance so that you know, after you maybe have experimented with several different videos uh, or topics or ideas, you know which ones are working and which ones you should double down on and, and which you should maybe toss to the side because maybe they're just not getting as much attention. So all I have to say, how do you measure your success in terms of your YouTube content? Well, you wanna do so with KPIs, key performance metrics. KPIs are used throughout business operations, depending, uh, you know, besides, you know, just marketing. And in general, with KPIs, they inform you, you know, what's, uh, just makes your goals measurable in terms of, you know, helping you to achieve your goals. So the first KPI in terms of your YouTube marketing success that you must be tracking is total watch time. Total watch time tells you more than just looking at, okay, we had 300 views. Okay, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean in terms of you know, actual time spent on your content? It tells you when viewers are turned off by your content because it might not be engaging them or they're just getting bored. They're gonna walk away, get a sandwich, delicious sandwich maybe. Uh, or it can tell you that your content is being watched in its entirety and by what percentage of your audience indicating, well, you're delighting your audience to the extent that they're gonna wait on that sandwich, that very delicious sandwich. Can you tell I'm hungry? So a third of YouTube viewers will stop work watching a video typically within 30 seconds. And, you know, people have short attention spans. It's only been exacerbated by, uh, you know, the, the C word that we all went through the last year and a half where we're all stuck inside and we're all just, you know, downloading the apps and all on social media. And, and just, you know, the algorithms in general and sucking us in, you know, um, and we just, we just want constant simulations and that, so, Attention spans are short, no surprise there. Um, so you need to make sure that the beginning of your video is interesting so that viewers stick around, okay? And you wanna come, uh, just in general too, com coming with a, a sense of energy, like even if you're not doing something like totally over the top, like, you know, for example, if the, uh, when you blow something up towards the end of your video, um, what I'll typically see many marketers doing is, you know, they'll show maybe like a clip of this as, a, as like a preview you know, uh, so to get people to stick around to see that moment, well, they'll put that at the beginning of the video. You don't have to blow anything up per se, but at the very least, bring the energy to help uh, to engage people. Uh, telling stories is actually is also a great way to do this, and otherwise, just you know, uh, being authentic. You know, being authentic and bringing substance in terms of how you do it can be a great tactic as well. KPI that you must track number two: audience retention rate. In one study by marketing agency. Uru, they found that the average YouTube viewer tunes out around the 50 to 60% mark when going through the video. This is an example of measuring audience retention rate, okay? When you see like at what percentage of the way through the video people actually leave. But another study from Databox revealed that the typical audience retention on YouTube is actually a bit lower, around the 31 to 40% mark. Audience retention tells you at what point your videos people are checking out. Uh, and it gives you a good idea as to what parts of your videos are boring to your audience and they're gonna go get that sandwich. Uh, it affords you this stat, paying attention to this stat, affords you a chance to mix things up and experiment with what's going to get you the most optimal result in terms of people you know, staying longer. 
Okay. Now you might you might see on certain video platforms, you know, uh, like YouTube or if you're on Vimeo, for example, the stats tracking that I'm familiar with, where it's it's just a it's kind of like a gradual step down. This doesn't really tell you much by itself. Okay, that that's the important thing. It's more about looking at like what is that average for you for your brands, your videos in general on YouTube, and you know where is that mark where people are most dropping off. And in terms of, you know, like the, the step down in terms of people like stopping that stop watching the video and then some percentage ultimately get to the end, you want to pay attention to those points where there's there's a particular steep drop. Okay, well, you want to try to pick out those patterns in particular. Okay, because and, and then go look at the content in the video and what were you saying there? Were you pausing? Were you thinking? You know, was there a was there a typo in, in the script if you're reading from the script? Uh, was there some sort of some irrelevant information or just something that just did not connect with your audience in terms of maybe what they were looking for, what they wanted, or it was just, you know, something you you tried to be entertaining and it didn't work out. And that sandwich called to your view and they went and they got it. So KPI to track number three, cost per view. Cost per view shows you how effective your YouTube ads are, if you're advertising in this case, obviously. And constantly, you wanna compare your cost per view with your target cost per view and make adjustments accordingly, okay? Because not all views are created equal, right? So maybe your ads are being seen by the wrong audience. You know, they can be seen by people who are, you know, of a different demographic than the one that you're trying to target in terms of, you know, trying to attract customers, clients, leads. So maybe you're placing your video ads in the wrong places uh, and monitoring cost per view signals to you which targeting tactics are working best. Now keep in mind, a view is only registered when a person watches at least 30 seconds of your video. UK snack company Baby Bell UK was monitoring its YouTube KPIs and found that view rates were excellent, but they weren't hitting their cost per view target. This informed them that they needed to target more than just small children uh, audience from their previous efforts. By appealing to young adults, teenagers, and kids, Baby Bell cut its cost per view in half. And without monitoring cost per view, CPV, the marketing team would have assumed everything was just going great since views were going up. So focus on not just quantity, but quality, and it's gonna help you. Uh, it, it's very helpful to understand that, again, not all uh, views are created equal because you could have a video that you know, gets a million views, but again, the quality of that traffic, what percentage is the people that you actually, you know, care about reaching. And it doesn't have to be a net loss either because it's potentially maybe good long-term to be generating views that, uh, come, uh, rather videos that have a lot of views because perhaps those people could kind of carry your message through word of mouth. They may not buy directly from you, but maybe they're in the market or adjacent to your market. So you have to kind of think strategically about this and factor that into to your decision making. KPI to track number four, number four, uh, traffic source KPIs. All right, so this sets the agenda for where you want your viewers to discover your video in the first place. Do you want to increase views from recommended videos on YouTube, uh, from social media posts, from the YouTube search bar? Focusing too much on one source of traffic is not ideal. By setting a goal for views from specific internal and external sources, you gain a better understanding of what sources need to be worked on. So the point of this one, there are several several different ways for people to actually discover your video in the first place. You wanna be aware of all of them. And depending on the content, depending on where you can best stand out in terms of getting quality views and quantity of traffic that's relevant to you, to, your, to the target audience that you're looking to reach, you wanna focus on those uh, one or more areas, okay? KPI to track. Number five, demographics. So before each video, you might have a target demographic profile you want to resonate with. Is it males between the ages of 18 to 30 you want to target? You can add location targeting as well. If you're only looking to sell to North Americans and Europeans, then it's not necessarily great when most of your YouTube engagements come from users in the Middle East or East Asia. On the other hand, you might start noticing trends with your audience demographics. With that, you might uncover a new opportunity you can take advantage of. Maybe the demographics for your audience on YouTube is vastly different from your Instagram okay, and or Facebook. Use that knowledge to differentiate your YouTube content. You want to speak to the people who are interested in your message. Okay, sometimes, 
you know, we're just, we're, we're a little surprised by, you know, you put some content out and you think it's going to go a certain way, just, just like everything in life, but, you know, especially with sales funnels and especially with, you know, YouTube content in terms of engagement, in terms of people leaving comments. Uh, by the way, guys, like the video. I appreciate it and leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, once you're done watching here. But you just, the, the point of what I'm trying to get to is just roll, roll with the punches and adapt and, and see that, okay, like, Maybe I'm not reaching my exact target demographic, as I was kind of alluding to in a previous point. But maybe those people are in, a, in a, are in an adjacent market, or maybe there's a different way to capitalize on it. Okay, because opportunity and growth is largely about mindset. So the filter through which you decide to view what actually happens when you're investing in YouTube as a growth channel, you know, not just being uh, too narrow-minded in terms of like, okay, we're getting this result, but it's it's not perfectly the right uh, people that we're looking to target, the people with the money who can who can buy the product or the service that we're looking to sell. Uh, so, so stay strategic and stay flexible, okay, in terms of looking at the results and, and finding the opportunity if it's not immediately apparent, okay? So to, to wrap up, according to Google, uh, baby boomers and Gen X are the fastest growing demographics on YouTube, good to know, and for uh, U.S. marketers, basically all ages use YouTube with 15 to 35 year olds leading the way. Unsurprisingly, 77% of them are using the platform, but 67%, 56 year olds and, and, and higher, 56 plus demographic, use it as well. You know, YouTube has really done an amazing job of nailing their algorithm in recent years. Uh, engagement is just, you know, been continuously growing, growing, growing on YouTube for that reason. They have a very powerful network effect. And to the extent that me personally, I don't know if you guys have this experience, but I find YouTube uh, a more attractive value offering than just uh, TV channels through cable, where you have, I don't say infinite choices, but you have uh, hundreds of channels to choose from, you know, with movies and news and documentaries and you know whatever's going on uh youtube their algorithm the ai behind it is very very powerful they are just great at keeping people engaged for longer periods of time even though it's it's a different format to a traditional type of uh television show type of format right so anyway uh to briefly review the five kpis that you want to look out for and you want to uh, focus on are total watch time all right audience retention rate cost per view traffic source uh, KPIs and demographics, okay? So that's five, but during our research, just in the interest of keeping this video uh, a bit concise, we found 13, so there are several others, don't do math live, uh, <laughs> eight others that you should um, that you, you should know about. And we have the link to that full article down below in the description, right by that like button, where it'd be awesome if you just clicked it for us. Uh, so hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If there are other KPIs that you find most relevant to your business, I would love to hear about your success. This is a topic that uh, we are continuously learning about. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're, we're thinking of starting our own live podcast with video um, where we interview just fellow team members, clients. We talk about um, you know marketing problems that we're looking to solve internally or that our clients are solving. Uh, in working with AutoGrow and delegating and getting work off of their plate and um, and just otherwise bring in other marketers and interviewing them and just hanging out and having a good time, uh, doing some ridiculous stuff as we all grow together. It's going to be a good time. It's just an idea right now, but it's percolating. So before I get off here and go get that sandwich, the final thing that I want you to know about is AutoGrow.co. Uh, we have openings for clients right now. AutoGrow, our value proposition is very simple. Get your marketing work done for you fast and with quality, okay? Get quality marketing work done for you fast. And basically anything that you wanna take off of your plate as a business owner, okay, as a marketer, as an agency owner, you're in the driver's seat. You don't have to go through the typical headaches of hiring where you have to put up a job post, you have to interview people, you have to deal with you know, hiring, firing drama, skip all of that. You sign up for AutoGrow, you get an all-in-one team, design, development, copywriting, ads, uh, we just added video recently, voiceover, and it's we're so I'm so proud to offer you guys this because it's it's just it's a very powerful thing. It's an all-in-one team, and it's it's your Swiss Army knife for just getting work off your plate. 
and it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of money. It's going to help you grow your business a lot faster as well because it just expands your capacity. So if you're an agency, for instance, and you can take on 20 to 30 percent or however much, however many packages you want to buy from us, if you want to scale up your capacity so you can take on, it's just a matter of making that investment rather than uh, you know going out and, and, and hiring in-house and dealing with all, all the complications that come with that. Uh, a lot of our clients uh, are agencies and they're able to grow by simply increasing their capacity signing up with us. It's great. So it solves a really big problem for agencies. But if you are a business owner, if you're a marketer in general, it's gonna help you just to execute. So those ideas that you're thinking about where it's like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm doing the work myself or you know, my team is doing it internally or whatever the case is, you can get that work done so much faster by just delegating it through the AutoGrow app. Okay, so you log in, you tell us what you wanna get done and you just watch the progress bar as it goes from zero to 100% in real time. Okay, we have very fast turnaround times and it is quality work, okay? And based on the package that you choose, you know, we can actually turn around things for you faster. And you get a, a dedicated project manager on the higher packages as well. So check it out. It's autogrow.co. Uh, we are launching this week our free trial. So it's, it's completely free for the first seven days that you sign up. And we give you an extra seven days uh, as part of our 14 day money back guarantee. Uh, so after the first week, you still have an additional seven days uh, to, to make up your mind and, and, and just for your peace of mind uh, for when you sign up to give us a try. So it's a 14 day um, you know, complete satisfaction guarantee in there as well. All right. So until next time, uh, stay focused, keep auto growing, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.